This program has been made possible by the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yeah. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. We're so glad to have you with us on Jesus the Healer. Thank you for joining us. And uh, I tell you what, we're believing God for answers for you, Amen. for light that you need to come. Amen. Amen. And I've got a studio audience here with me and they're drawing too. Yes. We're all just hungry and we're here to receive. Amen. Amen. And we have been teaching on the mind because everyone's got one and we all take it with us everywhere we go. And so we need to know how to handle it. We need to become skillful uh, toward the thought life. And we need to recognize, um, we need to recognize what a, a sound mind uh, cooperates with. And so we've been taking as our golden text, 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. And Paul wrote to Timothy and he said, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but a power of of love and of a sound mind. God's already given that to us. Right. We're not trying to get a sound mind. That's part of our inheritance in Christ. But we must learn how to uh, cooperate with that sound mind that is ours. Because our sound mind has to be fed. It has to be fed right thoughts. It has to be fed the Word of God. We have to have boundaries. Amen. Of how far, uh, w w the boundaries that a sound mind will stay within. What is that? What are the boundaries? The word. Mm -hmm. Amen. The word is the standard yes. of boundaries for the thought life. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the amplified translation says this about a sound mind. It says it's a calm mind. It's a well balanced mind that it is a disciplined mind. It is a controlled mind. Amen. And so that's the kind of mind God authored for us. But we have to realize this to enjoy that sound mind, for that sound mind to be evident in our everyday life. We have to know how to stand our ground against things that challenge the soundness of mind. The devil's always trying to insert wrong thinking yeah. into our minds. Listen, he offers wrong thoughts, mm -hmm. but uh, just because he offers, offers them doesn't mean we have to take them. We're in charge of what thoughts we take. Amen. His offer is not us taking it. We don't have to take, we're not, uh, it's not automatic that we have to take what, what's offered, right? So when he offers us wrong thoughts, we are authorized to answer those with the word and resist those and reject those thoughts because we have to know how to stand our ground. Why? So that we can enforce the victory Jesus made ours. And part of that victory is a sound mind. Amen. Amen. The devil wants to trouble your thought life. He wants to insert wrong thinking yeah. because that's the, that's the only way he can get into your life. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you think wrong, then you open the door to the enemy. Yes. But by thinking right, you keep the door closed to the enemy. Mm -hmm. And a sound mind has to be, it, 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 it enjoys a renewed mind. Yes. If we don't renew our minds, the soundness of mind will not be enjoyed that belongs to us. Mm -hmm. And uh, a renewed mind is one that takes on the thoughts of God. It has taken God's thoughts and made them your own. Mm -hmm. And a renewed mind, we say a renewed mind, but really a renewed mind isn't enjoying that renewed mind until it's being lived in your everyday life. Mm -hmm. It's not just memorizing the word. Mm -hmm. It's not just confessing the word, which these, you know, confessing the word is important, but it's the word lived. Yeah. Yeah. The word says it's the doer that's blessed. Yeah. And so we have to make sure that we're renewing our mind by living out what the Word says. And when we do, we'll enjoy the soundness of mind that He had, has already made ours. Now, we've been looking at Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Paul was writing and he said, My brethren, be strong in the Lord and, and be strong in the power of His might. Now, why is he telling us that? 
because we have to, uh, we have to be skillful in the word and the spirit so that we can stand strong against the opposition that comes against us. Yeah. It's very difficult to uh, be ready for opposition that comes when you're less than full. Yes. When you're not full of the word, it's very difficult to stand your ground when you're less than full of the spirit. Mm -hmm. So to be full of the word, to be full of the, of the spirit, this is what he's talking about here, will help us stand immovable in the face of whatever adversity comes. Because listen, adversity is going to come, but it doesn't have to move you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So he's telling us how to be ready so that we're not moved by what comes against us. Yeah, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be, be full of the word, be full of the spirit. That's really what that's saying. Mm -hmm. Then the next phrase there in Ephesians 6 verse 10 says this, put on the whole armor of God mm -hmm. that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Notice it doesn't say anything about God here, that you may be able. Mm -hmm. Many are waiting for God to do something and God says you are able yes. yeah. to do something. Mm -hmm. You're able to stand against the wiles of the devil or the strategies, the devices of the devil when you have on the whole armor of God. And then he says this, for we wrestle not. Now, pay attention to that word wrestle. He didn't say fight. He said wrestle. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood or against people, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. These are all just different levels of demons. Mm -hmm. yeah. But he says, we're not rest. He said, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Why does he proceed listing the, these demons by talking about flesh and blood? Because they so much of the time manifest through flesh and blood. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the devil will use people. And you have, to, you have to realize that person is not really the source of the problem. Yes, right. It's the one energizing them. It's the one they're yielding to. Yes. The devil would love for you to, to be charging at people because then you really miss the target. Oh. Have you ever seen maybe a, a, a movie or something that had a matador in it? Mm -hmm. A bullfighter? Yeah. And this matador holds in... in in front of this bull, a bright colored cape or cloth, and the bull sees that. It gets his attention, and then he starts charging that cloth. And when he charges at the cloth and, of course, misses the, the guy holding the cloth, the guy holding the cloth sticks a sword in him. It's like you want to tell the bull, just move over two feet. <laughs> Quit charging the cloth, <laughs> really, your problem is, bull, <laughs> the one holding the cloth. Well, see, this is what the devil does. People that will yield to him, the devil will uh, take advantage to use them. And if you're not careful, you start charging them and you miss the dude holding up the problem. And that's what this verse is saying. Don't charge at people. People aren't the source of these things. There's, a, there's, there's influences behind people. And they, many times they don't realize they're yielding. Yeah. They don't know that they're, that they're being used many times. So don't charge them. Uh, go after the dude that's trying to work through them. That's right. yes. Amen. Yes. Stand your ground against him, not against people. Yes. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. And so notice this, being full of the word and full of the spirit helps us to realize who's the real issue. Yes. The real issue is not people around us that may be uh, in the picture of what we're facing. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise now, I want us to look at verse 11. It says in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 11, it says, put on the whole armor of God. Mm -hmm. Who's going to put it on? We, we are. Uh -huh. God doesn't put it on us. We put it on. He provided the armor, but we have to put it on. Yes. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles or the strategies, the devices of the devil. So in verse 14 through 17, Ephesians 6 verses 14 through 17, we see a listing of the armor that he's referring to. 
we see first of all that he says the girdle of truth. Yes. So uh, the girdle of truth to understand God's word accurately. Mm-hmm. Amen. The truth mm-hmm. of God's word. Mm-hmm. It girds us. Yeah. At the girdle of truth, that's, that's where uh, a warrior would uh, attach a sword onto that girdle. He would attach his equipment onto that. But if that girdle is not secure, all of his weaponry falls. It's out of his use. He can't use it, you see. So what is the girdle of truth? To understand God's word accurately. When we don't understand, know who we are in Christ, when we don't know what he's made ours, we have all this weaponry, but we can't even access it. It's fallen away from our life, not because it doesn't belong to us, but because it's not tight to us. We don't have an accurate knowledge of it. Then the next thing that is a piece of our armor, it says it's the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate of righteousness. Well, here, you know, police officers or someone who's in security, many times they'll wear, you know, a bulletproof vest. That's the, their breastplate. We would see that today, right? What are they covering? They're covering their vital organs, uh-huh. right? Yes. So the breastplate of righteousness, it's vital. Ah, uh-huh. oh, it's vital to yeah. you. Uh, it guards your spirit, man. Uh-huh. The breastplate of righteousness. Uh-huh. Um, the breastplate of righteousness. Listen, we are righteous, uh-huh. not because of anything we've done. But Jesus is righteous and he made us righteous with his righteousness. We share his righteousness. Righteousness is doing right, being right. Jesus is right with God and he brought us into his rightness with God. It's not, righteousness is not something earned. It's a gift he gave us. It's it's our righteousness because he gave it to us. We're not righteous because we've done everything right. We're righteous because Jesus did everything right. And he made us sharers of that righteousness. His righteousness is now made ours. So we're right with God. Now see what will happen if you don't understand that, that breastplate of righteousness, you don't understand that you're right with God, you will draw back from the presence of God. You'll draw back from laying hold. You'll draw back from being bold with the word. You'll draw back from receiving from God. If you're just trying to do something with works and not understanding, wait, I'm righteous and I have approach to God. I have a right in his presence. I have a right to my inheritance because I am righteous, not because I've earned it, but because Jesus gave it and made it mine. Amen. So we're in right standing because we're in Christ, not because we're, we've done everything right. Amen. Amen. Now being righteous includes us now that we are righteous in Christ. That righteousness needs to be expressed through the way we live. Meaning this, we do right and we treat people right. right. Amen. Yes. That we're right in our dealings with people. Uh-huh. We're right in our dealings with situations. Yeah. That's why he warned us, don't fight against flesh and blood yeah. because that's not the way righteousness operates. Yeah. Yes. You got to be right toward people. Uh-huh. Even if they're not right toward you, you be right toward yeah. them. Right. Amen. Amen. And so we can be bold mm-hmm. when we are on the right side, when we're taking the right stance on the word. See, the right stance is always standing on the word, mm-hmm. siding in with the word. If you side in against the word, you're not, you're not in the right stance. You're not standing in your righteousness. Mm-hmm. When you side in with fear, when you side in with worry, when you side in with doubt, you see, that's, that's not standing on the word. Mm-hmm. When, because you're right, you take a right stance. And a right mm-hmm. stance having done all to stand, stand therefore. Stand what? On the word. Hold fast to the word. Amen. Amen. Then the next thing we have that's part of our armor, it says that our feet are to be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Don't you appreciate? This is a peace gospel. (laughs) Amen. That you have peace with God because of this word, because of this truth. So our feet are shod. What's that mean? They're, they're ready. They're, they're clothed. They're, ah, they're covered up, ready for, ready for any hard thing in its path. It won't injure you because your feet are guarded and safeguarded from it. 
Your feet are shod, are shod with, look at this word, with the preparation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, a renewed mind is prepared. Yes. It's prepared with right thinking. Uh -huh. It's prepared with right answers. Yes. It's prepared with right thoughts. Yes. Amen. Amen. Being prepared for what's going to come. Because yeah. something's going to come. I don't care who you are. I don't care how long you've been born again. Things are going to come. <laughs> Being prepared for whatever comes by daily walking in the light of the word. That's what this is talking about. Your feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel. See, you've been walking in the word every day. So because you're a doer of the word, you're walking in the word, you're prepared for what opposition comes because you're walking in the light of the word. Dad Hagen used to say to us, he, he used to say, it's dangerous to come up to light and not walk in it. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you're not doing this. Your feet aren't shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. When you get light of the word, mm -hmm. you have to walk that direction. Mm -hmm. Walk in the light of what you know. God expects you to mm -hmm. once you receive that light. And it's our privilege to do that, right? Yes. So our feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Now, let me uh, veer off a little bit with this. The Holy Spirit is our helper. Yeah. Yes. And we have divine help. Now, notice he's not our doer. Right. Mm -hmm. He's our helper. Right. Meaning this, he helps us when we're doing the word. Uh -huh. But if we're not doing the word, he's got nothing to help. Yes. Uh -huh. He's not our doer. Uh -huh. right. He helps us in our doing and in our obedience to the word. We're empowered with his divine assistance. One way that he helps us is he prepares us. He leads us into being prepared. Okay. My husband went home to be with the Lord in October of 2013 suddenly. Two years before my husband went home to be with the Lord, the Spirit said to me, all I want you doing is practicing peace. Mm -hmm. Now, he didn't mean don't do anything else. He right. meant make that the emphasis of, of your study, of your daily life, practice peace. Yes. Now you say, Pastor Nancy, how do you practice peace? You pay attention to your thought life. Mm -hmm. Any thought that doesn't end you up or lead you to peace, mm -hmm. you reject it. Uh -huh. You That's cast right. it down. Yes. You refuse it. Amen. And really, can I tell you what? That's called walking in the Spirit. That's one way we walk in the Spirit is we guard our thought life. So I paid special attention. Why? Because the Holy Spirit in helping me, He was instructing me how to be prepared. So I did that. For the next two years, I paid attention to every thought. And what happened? Ah, no, nothing could trouble me. Why? It couldn't get in. Nothing could worry me. Why? It couldn't get in. Mm -hmm. Nothing could, no doubt could trouble me. Why? I wouldn't let it in. Mm -hmm. Because the moment that was offered to me, I said, no, you don't. I'd answer yes. it with the word. I rejected it. I cast that thing down. Mm -hmm. I rejected it. So I did that for two years. Then one day, my children come to the house and they said, Mom, Dad, Dad's, uh, Dad went home to be with the Lord. Because I was already practiced at the flow of peace, grief could not get in. That's good. Sorrow could not get in. Why? I was prepared. Yes. This, this is part of our weaponry. Uh -huh. This is part of our armor, rather. Our feet are shod. It's the way you're walking daily life. Yes. See, for, I, my, I took my daily life and I prepared. The God, I applied the word and the word prepared me. My feet were shod with a preparation. Preparation is so important. Yes, if a student's not prepared for a test, they likely don't pass it in school. Yes. Right? Yes. If you're prepared, you pass it. Yes. And one, the, one of the primary ways the Holy Spirit helps us is He instructs us how to be prepared. Now, if we won't follow His instruction, mm -hmm. then He can't help us the way He wants to. Yes. Now... Um, what if I hadn't have taken those two years and practiced peace, mm -hmm. focused on mm -hmm. what I allowed in my thought life? What if I hadn't? Have? The outcome of how that event of my husband's home going would have, 
it would have affected me different. It would have affected my family different. Mm -hmm. It would have affected our congregation yes. differently, whether or not I was prepared. Mm -hmm. yes. Now, also, God had me unknowingly preparing the congregation because for four years, I taught on the mind in our church for four years. Mm -hmm. And then when that event came, we were not taken off course. Yeah. We were not swayed into, into defeat. Yeah. We gained momentum. That's right. That's right. Why? Because we rested on the one who brought us that far. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah, so mm -hmm. this is so important mm -hmm. that you cooperate with the word, with the spirit mm -hmm. in, pre in, in preparing. Because when you're prepared, anything that comes you step over it easily. Sure. Now, I hope people understand the way I mean this. The greatest tragedy of my life was my husband's unexpected homegoing. Yes. But that was not my hardest trial. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I was prepared. Yes. I was prepared. Yes. My hardest trials were when I was younger in my Christian life, and my mind wasn't renewed. And I didn't know the right answer. And I didn't know how to keep out wrong thoughts and troubling thoughts. I didn't know how to answer. Those were the hardest years by, and times by far. But when you know the answer, the word turns hard things easy. Wow. And so we, I had learned by practicing peace for two years, I would not let my mind touch into What's going to happen to the ministry? I wouldn't let my mind go there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to worry. I refuse to, I, I refuse to worry. Yes. I refuse. Yes. What about, you know, what about uh, income? What about, my, I would not touch it. Yes, mm -hmm. I would not touch it. Mm -hmm. I was so acquainted with the flow of peace mm -hmm. and I was so acquainted with how to stay in the flow of peace mm -hmm. that, that grief and sorrow could not get in. Mm -hmm. And too many times we treat grief and sorrow as a way of honoring someone, that we grieve over them. Uh, but the, the word tells us that Jesus, he took our infirmities, he bare our sicknesses, but not only that, he redeemed us from grief and sorrow. If grief and sorrow were a flow of honor, why did Jesus come redeem us from it? I knew this, the way to honor my husband was to continue with the plan of God that he was obedient to. Yes. I knew the way to honor him was to do the word he taught all of us. Uh -huh. That's the what the, the word is how you honor. Yes. Amen. Not with getting into a ditch of depression, uh -huh. a, a hole of grief and yes. sorrow. Yes. Amen. Because God offers us a higher flow. Yes. But because I had practiced peace. Yes. For, uh, for those two years, I focused especially on that. Mm -hmm. What happened, I, knew, I quickly recognized what was not peace. Mm -hmm. And really, it was simply walking in the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Being led by the Spirit. Yes. And so th these words carry special meaning and need to for all of us mm -hmm. when it says our feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. I was prepared when it came to that season of life that I had to walk through. Mm -hmm. My feet were prepared yeah. with the gospel mm -hmm. that was uh, enshrouded in peace. Notice, notice what it says in the book of Isaiah. They shall go out with joy yes. and be led forth with peace. When you're acquainted with the peace that leads, you're not going the wrong direction. Uh -huh. If you'll stay in the flow of the peace mm -hmm. that leads, mm -hmm. if you'll obey the peace that's leading you, mm -hmm. don't go against peace. Mm -hmm. If you don't have, and I'm not talking about peace of the mind. I'm talking about peace in your spirit. Yes. When you have peace in your spirit about something, follow that. Mm -hmm. No matter what your mind says, because your mind can give you reasons, you know, calculations, reasonings. Mm -hmm. But you can have peace in your, in your spirit, even though the devil may be trying to harass your mind. Mm -hmm. Follow the peace. Mm -hmm. Because as you stay in the flow of peace, you'll stay in the flow of victory. Mm -hmm. And I tell you what, the flow of peace is the flow of the sound mind. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank God. People need to understand. Yeah. You need to practice. Now, li listen to those words that the Spirit said to me. All I want you doing is practicing peace. Mm -hmm. Practicing. Practice it. Uh, no one gets good at anything without practice, yes. whether it's n something natural or something spiritual. Mm -hmm. 
You have to practice. You don't get good at yielding to the love of God without practicing yielding to the love of God. You don't get good at walking in faith without practicing walking in faith. Well, it's the same thing with this. You don't get good at staying in peace unless you practice it. And what an honor to know that just because a tragedy came to our family that day, the flow of peace was not withdrawn. The tragedy could not remove the flow of peace. I want you to know, and I'm here to testify personally to you, peace is a far greater force than the the flow of death. Peace is a far greater force than the flow of death. And I'm here to testify it firsthand because that death, that spirit of death could not take my peace from me. Why? Because I had practiced staying in it. It's a flow and it's a force. Amen. Practice peace. Practice it. That's part of your armor Uh that you have to have feet shod. What's that mean? The way you walk. Uh Because there's going to come all kinds of obstacles in your path. And your feet have to be ready Mm -hmm. to step over those without stopping, Mm -hmm. without going, without being injured. Mm -hmm. See, if I would just, if I would have decided, because I could have yielded to grief. Mm -hmm. I could have yielded to depression if I wanted to. Mm -hmm. But I had already tasted peace and I wasn't willing to exchange it for something less. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 I could have yielded if I wanted to. But... If I would have yielded to depression, if I would have yielded to grief, it would have hindered my steps. Uh And my feet are to be shod, being prepared with the gospel that leads me on the path of peace. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And because I had practiced peace, I was able to instruct others, my children and the congregation, don't you yield to anything. Don't you, yeah. don't you yield anything that's going to depress you and throw you in a hole. Yeah. Amen. Don't get into the questions. Why? Mm-hmm. How come that happened? Mm-hmm. Questions will throw you in a hole. Oh, yes. Amen. Yeah. Don't go there. Stay in the flow of peace. Yeah. Amen. You don't have to know every answer to stay in the, stay in the flow of peace. You just know the one who has all the answers. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're teaching out of this book of Sound Discipline Mind. We invite you to get yours today. Go to DufresneMinistries.org and we'll get it to you. Remember, Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. God offers you his thoughts. Take them. This life-changing book by Nancy Dufresne, A Sound Disciplined Mind, will instruct you on how to do that. God's Word will reach into your everyday life, transforming it. It will lift you from the commonplace into the supernatural. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible.